This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits. This is accessible through our online course modules that can be accessed at www.emergencymedicalminute.org backslash CME dash courses, or simply by clicking on the link in our show notes and creating an account. All right. Well, good morning. I was going to talk about uh, two interesting cardiac arrest cases the last two days. Kind of unusual to have similar causes of a cardiac arrest back to back days. So the first case was a gentleman in his 60s. Uh, EMS did not have a lot of history. Basically, uh, when they Um, were called. The patient was near arrest and they saw a rhythm on the monitor that was wide and slow and then quickly went into cardiac arrest. They started um, ACLS, epi, CPR. When he arrived here, was still kind of in asystole. And during the code, we got Epoch Labs and it showed a potassium of greater than 12 and a creatinine of 10. So a hyperkalemic arrest uh, with him which was unknown to have renal failure beforehand. Uh, The second case uh, yesterday was a gentleman in his 80s um, who was known to have renal failure but uh, had not started dialysis yet. And then um, family called because of unresponsive at home, was found to be in cardiac arrest, and EMS actually got uh, ROSC before his arrival with CPR, epi. Uh, They gave calcium and bicarb. Um, and he had good pulses here and had a potassium of eight and a creatinine of seven. And he actually did maintain, you know, pulses. So both these were seemingly hyperkalemic cardiac arrests. And, you know, sometimes we see people who come in and they have known renal failure or we have some reason to suspect it. And maybe we get them before they're in arrest. And, you know, we can kind of try and treat them aggressively if we see like a wide QRS and try and get the potassium down. But then, you know, kind of brings up some interesting questions on when they're actually in cardiac arrest or they come in with an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. Treatment, you know, is basically a lot of the same things. Good CPR, defibrillation if possible, epinephrine. But then if you suspect a hyperkalemic cause of the arrest, you can do the same treatments that you would do for hyperkalemia, um, including the calcium to stabilize the membrane. You can do calcium chloride if you have good access or calcium gluconate, bicarb. And then you can try things like the insulin and D50 to drive down the potassium temporarily. And then, you know, if you get ROSC, then you talk about dialysis. But one thing that was interesting when I was kind of looking up these cases, there are case reports of patients having a hyperkalemic arrest and getting put on dialysis while they're getting CPR. And, you know, there's multiple case reports of people who have had potassiums of 10, 11, long course of CPR, like 70 minutes of CPR while trying to get someone on dialysis, getting them on dialysis, having another 30, 40 40 minutes of CPR, getting pulses back once their potassium does come down, and then potentially having good outcomes some of the time. I'd say that these are fairly heroic measures. Um, You know, for our patient yesterday, once we basically stabilized got a dialysis catheter in. It was still several hours to get to the ICU to get dialysis. We don't typically dialyze patients down here in the ED. I'd say it would be, like I said, a very heroic kind of extreme situation to get someone dialyzed in the emergency department while they're getting CPR. But it is something to consider if you have someone who's you know, potentially young and you think is otherwise salvageable to potentially um, initiate as a potential treatment. So any questions, comments? All right. Thanks, guys. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division, and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.